and welcome to Quelho's office. I'm Paulo Quelho. This is my office. And today I'm here to talk to you about some news that leaked in Brazil three weeks ago that I was close to die, that I only had 30 days to live. Well, but the, the news were in three lines. <laughs> and uh, this is not exactly what happened. So I'm going to tell you what happened because I started receiving emails from, from all over the world, including Brazil, my friends, my readers, etc. In September 2011, the father of my best friend died suddenly of a heart attack. And my best friend, well, she was totally desperate, uh, of course, because her father died, but also because she thought that uh, everybody in her family should, should go through this effort test that you do, uh, a kind of electrocardiogram. So she started telling me and her husband, they said, Let's, you have to do this, you have to do this. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do this. First, because I walk every day. Second, because I'm not a hypochondriac. And third, I do archery every day, as you can see now. You see, every time that I open this, this wall, it's like, uh, well, lifting a luggage that it is 22 kilograms or, or 45 uh, pounds uh, heavy. And I said, no, I'm okay, I'm not. But anyway, she insisted, she insisted, and then I went to the doctor. And here, well, I did the effort test. This was uh, November 28th, 2011. I did the effort test, and, uh, and then I did this electrocardiogram, and, and at the end, uh, we went to the cabinet, to the, to the office of the doctor. My wife and I, <laughs> he looked at me and said, Paulo, Mr. Coelho, he said, Mr. Coelho, you are going to die in 30 days. And I said, what? He said, you are going to die in 30 days. You have uh, two coronaries that are totally close it. So if you don't make an intervention immediately, you are going to die. And I was so surprised. I was not even scared. I was just surprised. I looked to my wife. My wife looked at me. I said, okay, uh, let me think. <laughs> I said, don't think, don't think. Act. And then I asked him uh, the results of the exams. And, uh, well, he gave me and said, uh, you want to hear a second, a third opinion? Do that, but do that very quickly. This was on Monday. And I went home and I scanned all these results, saying, oh, he's a little bit, uh, well, exaggerating. Because he asked me. Do you have anything? I said, no. Do you feel chest pain? I said, no. Do you feel tired? I said, no. I sent uh, this fact, this, uh, I scanned the documents and I sent it to my friends, doctors, and immediately they said, go, go through a, 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 a go check in your, 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 your arteries, catheteries. <sighs> <laughs> my God! <laughs> then <laughs> the thing about dying in thirty days—it was true. I went back to the doctor. I told, "Okay, I heard the second, the third, and a fourth opinion. Let's do the 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 procedure." And he told me, "We have two risks. It's better that you are aware first. Eventually, eventually, we cannot find the artery that is blocked." And then we have to open your heart and to do this bypass. If we find, I'm going to do an, an angioplasty. Percutaneous coronary intervention, also known as coronary angioplasty, opens narrowed coronary arteries. A small, hollow tube called a catheter 
is inserted into an artery in the groin or arm and threaded to the affected artery. A thin, flexible metal wire is then advanced through this tube and past the site of blockage in the artery. A second, smaller catheter is then inserted over the wire and threaded to the same artery. When it reaches the narrowed area, a small balloon on its tip is inflated to reopen the artery and flatten the blockage into the artery wall, while at the same time stretching the artery open to increase blood flow to the heart. Both catheters and the wire are then withdrawn. That this is exactly what you saw in the video. It is a balloon that opens the, the coronary. But the, the most important thing in this experience is that this was Monday I got the diagnosis and Tuesday I said let's do and he said let's do on Wednesday. And on Wednesday, on Tuesday evening, I was, uh, I was, well, ready to sleep. And I was thinking about my life, because he said that the second dangerous thing is that at the moment that we are doing this angioplasty, you can have a heart attack, something like this. But then I have a full evening to think about my life. And you know what? I said to myself, I'm always telling people that we have to face death. And now here am I facing death, real death, not something that I'm theorizing, uh, make some theories about. And I will die in peace. First, because I love, I, I married the woman that I loved. I spent more of half of my life with her, 33 years together. She's sleeping here by my side. She's in a good financial situation if I die. Second, I did all the crazy things you cannot imagine. All the crazy things that, well, uh, in my youth, they used to be common as a hippie. And then I understood that it was time to stop now, uh, and then I started living my life as it is. And finally, I worked in, in the only thing that I really dreamed of working, it was writing. So if I die tomorrow, I would die in peace. I would die in peace because I had love, I had the experience and I had my dream fulfilled. So the next day I went to the surgery. That is not a surgery, in fact. You don't even have, a, you don't even take anesthetics. It's just a small thing. They put the tube, it goes to your heart, and then they, they discovered, thanks God, the two uh, blocked arteries, they put two small uh, tubes that are called stents. And uh, and here my and and then when I was, you have to be in the intensive care for three hours just uh, to double check if nothing happened. And he said, you can go home tonight, and in two days you can play golf. <laughs> I said, well, I understand what he means. I don't play golf, but I understand that in today's everything uh, is okay. And since then, we are now in February or March, sorry. Since then, I'm doing everything that I normally do. I do my archery, I walk, uh, I have my professional, uh, uh, my co professional commitments, but the most important thing that I learned that evening is that when death knocks my door, because sooner or later it will, uh, I want to die like I could die that day, 20, 30, 30th of November, 
2011. Knowing that I fought the good fight, that I kept my faith, that I overcome my obstacles, and that I found love. That was the most important lesson. If I have to add something, yeah, there is no, no harm if you decide to go and do this stress test, you men and women, because normally they are not going to find anything, but like me, I, I was feeling nothing, and, uh, and they found that I was in a very serious uh, condition. Thank you very much. Let's have a wonderful week. May God bless you. We we'll see you, us, and, and you see you and I next Monday. Ciao.